Texas is bracing for higher temperatures this summer, which means residents will be demanding more electricity to combat the heat. And with the weather forecast, expect expected to hit triple-digit temperatures in the coming weeks. Experts are warning it could overwhelm the state's largest electric grid. The memory of last February is still fresh in Texans' minds when a deadly winter storm crippled that grid. Tens of millions of people were without power for days while temperatures remained below freezing. For more on all of this, let's bring in Daniel Cohan. He is an associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Rice University. He's also an author of the book, Confronting Climate Gridlock. Uh, Professor, welcome. It's great to have you with us. So, of course, the power grid in Texas isn't like power grids in some other states. Explain to us how Texas's grid works. Right. Texas is unique among all the states in the continental U.S. in deciding to run its grid as an island. So the entire western United States all the way up through western Canada is connected uh, through a large interconnection of grids. The eastern U.S. all the way up through eastern Canada is connected. And, and here we are in Texas as a, an island, which means that we can't import or export power as much as other states can. And, Professor, the grid was once again running short on power last summer, creating concerns the electric system there just can't deliver the power to people who need it the most. So what is behind that exactly? Is it because it's closed off? Yeah, we don't have the opportunity to bring power in when we need it most. Um, last summer was, for the most part, okay. Really, the big was the, that deep freeze that we got mm. in February 2021 when we came up one third short of the amount of uh, electricity that was needed and over 200 deaths have been attributed to that. Last summer, for the most part, uh, we got off easy with a typical or slightly cooler than typical summer. But right now we're heading into the summer uh, coming through the hottest May that we've had in much of the state. And, and it's very dry. It's been hot. And uh, most of the government forecasts are that we're likely to have a hotter summer than usual, which which could push things into very tight conditions. So, Professor, I'm sure that everyone in Texas, including people who don't live in Texas, want to know what steps have been taken to ensure that something like this, something like that does not happen again. How reliable is the grid now? Right. So for one thing, even though we're expecting record demand, we also have record supply because Texas has been adding solar farms faster than any other state. And that uh, number that's been added, uh, along with some wind farms that's been added, that gives us a bigger cushion than we actually had the past two summers. Um, and the state legislature passed a bill that's, that has led to tune-ups and inspection and maintenance of the power plants that we have. The trouble is that... Um, nearly half of our power plants are 30 years old or older. So mm -hmm. they've been inspected, they've been maintained, they've had steps taken, but we're still counting on a very old fleet of uh, coal and gas and nuclear plants to get us through the summer. Well, given all that, is there the possibility at all the grid could potentially fail anytime soon? If we have a typical summer, an average summer, a summer like we've had the past few summers, I think we'll be fine. Um, but the risk is it's been since 2011 since we had a really severe drought and heat wave. And I don't think the grid is ready for a repeat of a 2011 heat wave. Sure. And, you know, with the climate warming, there's no reason that how hot it got in 2011 is the hottest that it could ever get Again, it, we don't have a risk of things falling as far short as they did last February. I don't see any circumstance where we'd be a third short of demand, but, but definitely temporary, brief, localized rolling blackouts couldn't be ruled out uh, if we get a, a real strong heat wave this summer. Yeah, especially, Dyer, when you talk about uh, triple-digit temperatures already in the forecast at this point. Uh, Daniel Cohen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.